Hi, welcome to this new video about the messages exchange in the SCT classic scheme. The message we are considering today is the PAIN2. PAIN stands for payment initiation. So it is a message related to the payment initiation that we are considering. I will first give an overview of all the messages exchanged in the SEPA credit transfer classic scheme. Then we will locate the message pain to and the parties which send and receives it. Then we will look at the pain to identity card. What is the name of the pain to? When was it born? And what is its place of residence? You probably think this guy is crazy. <laughs> he presents messages like people. <laughs> well, it is just a way to really get acquainted with those messages. And let's have some fun during our payment journey. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> After the pain to identity card, we will talk about the pain to message structure and building blocks. Why is the pain to message needed? For which reason is it used? And I will end the presentation with a focus on the pain to reason codes. Let's begin with the overview of all the messages that we find in the SCT implementation guidelines documents. The pain to 1.3 is highlighted in green color. It is sent by the debtor bank to the debtor. In a previous video about the customer to bank space and the interbank space, I told you that messages sent from the bank to the customer are considered as reporting messages. So the pain to is a reporting message. Now let's take a closer look at the pain to identity call. The pain to is called customer payment status report message. In SEPA, the version 3 is used, but the version 9 is already available in the ISO 2022 standards. So the standard ISO 2022 is six versions ahead of SEPA. And you may wonder why SEPA has not adopted the next versions. Well, the reason is simple. The version 3 is totally fine for the SEPA needs, at least right now. SEPA might evolve in the future and take the version 4 or 5, but now it is totally okay. The pain 2 is a message exchanged in the customer to bank space between the debtor bank and his customer, the debtor. When a debtor sends a pain 1 message to its bank, the message might end up being rejected partially or totally for many reasons. When this happens, the debtor bank sends the pain to message to the debtor to inform him about the rejections. In certain cases, the debtor bank may send many pain to messages to the debtor while the pain one message is going through the different processing steps. Like many messages we have considered so far, the pain to 1.3 was born on March 30th, 2009 and put into its place of residence the message definition report. The file name is payment maintenance 2009.pdf. As the name of this message suggests, the pain to is used by the debtor bank to send status reports to his customer and those reports are related to the processing of the instruction that the debtor bank receives from the debtor. And in fact, the debtor bank is informing his customer about what happened after the message was received and processed. Now, pay attention to this. According to the SEPA guidelines, the pain to is sent only if there are rejections. But in the ISO 2022 standards, things are different. The customer payment status report message can be used to inform the sender about the positive statuses of messages or instructions. It can also be used to report on pending instructions or transactions in a message. This tells us that the pain to usage is very restricted and limited in the SEPA implementation, at least as presented in the SEPA implementation guidelines. In reality, it is common for a debtor bank to send the pain to to the debtor even if the message was fully, was totally accepted. I will say more about this when presenting the next slide. Now, how does a pain to message 
look like. The customer payment status report message is composed of three building blocks. A group header, an original group information and status, and an original payment information and status. As you can see, the transaction information status block is completely indented in the original payment information and status block. Now let's look at each block. The group header is mandatory and present once. It contains amount order, the message identification, which allows customer and bank to unambiguously identify the message. The message ID is generated by the debtor bank. The original group information and status block is also mandatory and present once. It gives information about the original message, the message identification and the message name and why that message was rejected. The following requirement is made in SEPA implementation guidelines about the group status element. The group status payment information status or transaction status must be present and with the code RGCT. So it looks like the assumption in SEPA is that the pain to should be sent only if something wrong happens during the processing of the pain one message. But corporate customers demand to receive a pain to even if everything is okay. So banks and customers should go beyond SEPA to close this gap. Coming back to group status, if present here, it means that the complete message was rejected since RGCT is the only code allowed. Let's move to the next block. The original payment information and status block is optional and repetitive. A message can contain several payment information blocks. If a message is rejected, then all payments information are also rejected and the original payment information and status does not need to be present in the pain too. If one or several payments information of the message are rejected and not the complete message, then the original payment information and status needs to be present in the pain too for each payment information that was rejected. The payment information can itself be partially or totally rejected. The payment information status is set to RGCT only if the payment information has been totally rejected. In case of partial rejection, the transaction information and status block comes into play. The transaction information and status is optional and repetitive. It is completely embedded, as already said, in the original payment information and status block. If a payment information has been partially rejected, then the transaction status will be present for each rejected transaction. Remember that only RGCT as code is allowed. Group status and payment information status elements do not have to be present since the rejection is neither at message level nor at order level, but only at transaction level. So each transaction information and status element contains the detail of a transaction that was rejected and information like original instruction identification and to an ID and those information allows corporate customers to reconcile the rejected transaction with the original transaction that was sent. Pretty interesting how this message can be used. Now, why is the pain to message actually needed? The answer is very simple exception handling. In an ideal world, only the pain one will be needed, but we know there is no process without exceptions. Exceptions can happen during the processing of the credit transfer message and related instructions. Issues can occur at message level, at order level, or instruction level, or transaction level. As a result, the full paying one message can be rejected or an instruction or a transaction in the paying one message might get rejected. The rejections can occur for many reasons. That is where reason codes come into play. A reason code tells you why and for which reason a rejection has occurred. To finish this presentation, let's take a closer look at them. In the SEPA implementation guidelines documents, only reason codes that are allowed in the SEPA scheme are mentioned. You find those reason codes after the bank to customer reject credit transfer data set description and under the paragraph message element specification. You can see that 
on the right of the slide here. And the reason codes that you see for the Paint 2 are the same that we saw for the PAX 2. The, the list of codes that you see here is a subset of all possible reason codes that we find in the ISO 2022 standard. The exhaustive list of reason codes is available in the external code sets spreadsheet that we can download from the ISO 2022 website. In the video about the PAX 4, I showed you how you can download that spreadsheet and how you can access the list of all reason codes. Check the end of the video about the PAX4 if you want to download and see the exhaustive list of reason codes used for the Pain 2 according to the ISO 2022 standards. That's the end of this presentation. If you have any question, just post a comment below the video. If you found the presentation useful, you can like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also go to permantor.com and subscribe to the newsletter to receive regular updates about articles and videos. Take care and see you soon on the channel.